Joining us now is OGOP with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jenny. Good morning, Dr. Abati. The lady in black. Yes. Hello, yellow. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Oh, great, thank you. You How look are you? bright and beautiful this thank morning. Thank you, as do you. Thank as you. As always. Thank you. Good morning, Rufai. Good morning, Roger. How are you? I'm good, thank Lovely. you. I said hello. I said oh, hello. I heard hello. you. Okay, good. No, no. <laughs> Just and, I, not. and I'm sure Mommy Gio heard it. So. Just not, I'm not going to hell. <laughs> you know I'm not. But she said hello for about Dubai people. Huh? I, I saw that. Someone that's, that's, that's born in Dubai <laughs> having a good See, she's just a brother, Jiro. She's in Dubai. Yes. <laughs> huh? She did room tour, hotel oh room tour. Goodness. Jesus Christ. <laughs> She says, I'll send my, you the video. See my wardrobe. I have no idea what's going on on social see? media. You're my only hope of sending you the video. Bobby Gio is grooving in Dubai, <laughs> having a good time. All expense paid trip. Uh, good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, President Joe Biden on Wednesday at a press conference held to mark his January 20th, 2021 inauguration said that his first year in office has been a year of challenges. We have faced some of the biggest challenges that we've ever faced in this country these past few years. I did not anticipate that there'd be such a stalwart effort to make sure that the most important thing was that President Biden didn't get anything done. In Nigeria, reactions drill the one billion Naira awarded to the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kano, by a high court in Abia State on Wednesday against the federal government over the violation of his rights. Under sports, the Super Eagles of Nigeria completed their Africa Cup of Nations Group D campaign with a thrilling 2-0 win over Guinea-Bissau at the Omini Sports Room de Adija Stadium in Cameroon on Wednesday night. The Super Eagles topped the group with nine points from three games in the ongoing tournament. And tennis champion Novak Djokovic is reportedly in talks with lawyers about suing the Australian government for $6 million over his failed bid to have his visa reinstated. According to a UK report, the figure includes the Australian open price money he expected to end if he had won. Djokovic was deported on the eve of the Australian Open following a week-long visa battle with the federal government. Under entertainment, the 2022 Grammy Awards ceremony has been postponed for a second consecutive year. The 64th edition of the annual ceremony, which will be hosted by comedian Trevor Noah, was initially billed for January 31st and has now been rescheduled to be held at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas on April 3rd. Finally, tributes pour in for actor Gaspar Uriel, who died on Wednesday after a skiing accident in southeastern France. Uriel was best known for playing Hannibal Lecter in Hannibal Rising and gained global acclaim for his portrayal of French fashion designer Yves Saint Laurent in the 2014 biopic, Saint Laurent. He was 37 years old. May his soul rest in peace. Well, let's begin what's trending. A video of a chieftain of the All Progressives Congress, Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, in which he stated that the current permanent voter cards issued by the Independent National Electoral Commission have expired, made the rounds on social media on Wednesday. In the video, he was addressing female leaders of the APC who paid him a visit in Abuja. Let's take a look at this video before we come back for a discussion. Take one family member, two family members, knock on all doors, and make sure that that new registration, because they, they may not announce to you on time, the PPC you have has expired. Yes. 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 You need to spread it around in various local government wards and levels, no matter how difficult it is. To me, I look at it closely, and you look at other elections being held, you see that it's diminishing, because 
Those cards expired. And they didn't answer. It's mandatory that you go and register in able to vote and achieve your aspirations. May God bless you and bless Nigeria. I particularly liked what he was doing, uh, yes. Tindra Biola, that he, you know, he gathered these women from the grassroots, encouraging them to try to vote. You know, I did read a report where he said that he made a mistake. He didn't mean that it was expired. He meant it was supposed to be updated. I don't know what difference that makes because the INEC, Independent National Electoral Commission, has come out to say that, you know, it, it, the PVCs are still valid. So I don't know what he was talking about there. Yeah, I think he was misinformed, but I do like everything about yeah. the story. Uh, recently, I can't remember how many days ago now, it's all a blur. PDP, in the, that meeting of PDP governors, was encouraging people to go out and register to vote, mm -hmm. obviously hoping they'll vote for PDP come 2023. That's an important message. Now you have an APC presidential candidate urging people to go and register to vote, even though he got some of the details wrong. Yeah. It's an, also an important message. And you also have INEC quickly responding, yes. which is also important. Yeah. So I just like the general thrust of what we're having here, mm -hmm. people being encouraged to vote. The idea that it is of crucial importance. Yes. But yes, it is is an offense according to the Electoral Act of 2010, which we're still having to cite. Unfortunately, because we haven't had an amendment, yes. it's section 117. If you have double registration or multiple registration, you could be fined 100,000 naira or one year in jail. So it's quite a serious offense. So it's important that INEC has come out to state that that's the reference they were making to the fact that it's actually an offense to do so. Yes. And that if you don't have your PVC or your PVC has been damaged in some way, you can take advantage of continuous voter registration, which will go on from now to six months yes. to the election. So, everybody, get out there. Well done. Did I hear you say presidential candidate? I hope that's not a Freudian slip. <laughs> you can't still, be there. He's still, he's still an aspirant. You can't be there. <laughs> anyway, it's as follows. INEC has in place, uh, to take uh, your last point, a, continua, a continuous voter registration exercise. And that continuous voter registration exercise is meant for persons who may not have registered before, or persons whose PVCs may be missing or may have been mis uh, misplaced or mm. defaced. Mm. And that was the point made by uh, Professor Yakubo, uh, the head of uh, INEC, and also reiterated by his chief press secretary, uh, Rutimi Oyekomi, uh, who pointed out that, in fact, you know, uh, double or multiple uh, registration is an, aff an offense yes. mm. under the law. And Tundu has already quoted the relevant uh, portion of the law. So that clarification, I think, uh, you know, is important. Well, if uh, what uh, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed was trying to do, and that's coming back to the point you started with, to encourage people who have not registered to go and register, to asking the women, the political, uh, uh, the women political leaders who visited him, to mobilize people in their constituencies uh, to register, then it will be doing the right thing. Yeah. It's called voter mobilization. But in terms of voter education, he failed. He misinformed his audience. And uh, I think sometime yesterday, Tunde Rahman, after the rebuttal from INEC, uh, you know, issued a statement and apologized and said this uh, principal, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu, had retracted yes. uh, that statement. Given who he is, that's why, you know, uh, there's this uh, general concern about the impact that that could have on people avoid people committing an offense by going mm -hmm. to register uh, a second time. But, I mean, uh, when people make mistakes and they immediately admit it and they correct it, I don't think uh, there, there is any big issue here. The final point is, of course, for everybody to realize that if your PVC, you know, uh, which is this microchip, uh, you know, biometric data uh, uh, voters card that they came up with uh, ahead of the 2015 election, if it's not missing, if it's not being defaced, then you are in order mm. yes. because it does not have a shelf life. Mm. Because nowhere on that PVC is it, in, is it indicated uh, that this uh, voter's card is going to expire, like uh, I think driver's license. Yes, yeah, some passports. Mm. Expire, expire well. passports. Or need expire. to be updated. Mm -hmm. yes. Rufai. Right, yes. Yeah. So uh, a lot of fact checkers were out yesterday and they've been able to debunk that because we're in an era of misinformation. I'm happy that uh, Tune Rama, like Dr. Bati said, did come out and put a message that uh, probably was asleep. What he meant was updating and all of that. Mm. 
But what is most important for me is the fact that a lot of people turned 18, millions of people in the population turned 18 after the last election. They need to go out there and register. And it's really important because, you see, if we want to change the dynamics of elections in this country, you need to go out there and vote. And it's time people stop complaining about problems in this country when they don't go out there and vote. And the argument of, will my vote count is jaded. Go out there and vote. It has to be said. Since the elections in 2003, we've not had voter turnout rate of over 60%, uh, of over 60%. There are about over 60 million people voted in that election right. that brought in uh, former President Lucia Gwabasanjo in. The last election, over 80 million people had PVCs, but less than 30 million people determined who became president. So there was a fall short of 50 million. So 50 million people that had PVCs didn't vote in the last election. And that's why I say you don't have a right to complain because you didn't vote. 50 million people with PVCs sat down in their homes and they didn't vote. And I think it's incumbent on us to push this voter education scene and the continuous voter registration is on. Go out there, register, and not just register. Come out and vote. If you don't vote, you have no right to complain that things are not working well in your country because you didn't let your voice be heard in all of this in the first place. Like so youngsters point. out there, come out there. You must vote. If this election is matters to you in 2023, at least you must get a sizable number. And you can see that your voice can be represented. Your hopes and aspirations for the country can be represented. But if you don't vote, you are part of the problem of Nigeria. Well, the thing to add to that is that the people themselves, whether... They are young or old or just of voting age, they must be assured that their votes will count. And that's why we're saying going ahead to the 2023 general elections, one major task for the Nigerian government is to ensure the credibility of the process. Absolutely. And once the people know that their votes will count, then of course they will have no reason uh, to either collect money from politicians or turn uh, their voters' card uh, into something else. Very well said, guys. Let's look at another story. The governor of Lagos State, Babajide Songwolo, on Tuesday acquired new sets of 10-car intra-city trains for the Lagos Red Line Rail project. The governor completed the acquisition deal at a public event inside the Milwaukee facility of the Spanish train manufacturer Talgo Incorporated in the United States. The Red Line, a 37-kilometer track rail project started by the governor when completed, will have 11 stations and will be the first operational metro system in West Africa. I want to thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I want to thank you for the great work, you know, and, and, the, and the, the ease of doing business. You've given a business like Tolga, you know, to continue to do what they know how to do well, which is providing a sustenance, you know, of livelihood for our citizens, being in Nigeria, being in Lagos, being in Milwaukee. It's all about providing jobs, jobs, jobs for our people. And that's what we're doing. It's about ensuring that we can build our economy and so that our people can move from one location to another and businesses can grow. We can all come out of COVID, whatever it is, in months and years ahead. So thank you very much. And we hope that this will be the beginning of a mutually beneficial business relationship. I think this is another laudable project, uh, Tundra Viola. I remember you know, when I spoke with the governor when he first um, took his uh, uh, lead, I mean, when he started being a governor in Lagos State, he did say transportation was one of the things that he really wanted to achieve in Lagos. I mean, if this happens, we will be having half a million passengers daily. I mean, how laudable is it? It's beautiful. Remember, we took that story on Monday on the Rice Pyramids, and this is another Feel good story, I believe. Congratulations to the Lagos State Governor and Lagos State in general. Absolutely. Congratulations are indeed in order. Milwaukee's loss due to all kinds of political yes. <laughs> bureaucracy mm -hmm. and nonsense is our gain here in Lagos. And I find it fortuitous that the seats and the colors are red, like that's yeah. the color of the state of Milwaukee, Milwaukee red, yeah. but it matches our red rail perfectly. Mm -hmm. So really all ends well that ends well. It's also good to see an administration that made promises and promoted an agenda, the themes agenda, and are actually sticking to their campaign promises. It's a huge pet peeve of mine when people don't yes. do that. And Rota shared with us recently this story about how the average Lagosian, by the time you're 55 years old, you're going to have spent six years of your life in traffic. So my mind also goes to that story when I see this. And that will just really improve the quality of our lives, lengthen lives, because we don't know the kind of stress that our bodies you know, undergo when you're sitting in traffic yeah. for hours and end. Productivity will be increased. It's just a win-win all around security as well. So great story. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Okay. One, this is uh, 
you know, the Lagos State government pursuing the themes agenda. The T in themes, which was, uh, you know, what uh, Governor Sonwulu promised the Lagos electorate, stands for traffic management and transportation. And the Lagos State government has this multimodal structure of uh, waterway transportation, mm -hmm. rail transportation, and also road transportation. And this is with regard to the 37 kilometers red line uh, uh, project from Agbadu to uh, Oyingu that the government is, uh, has been talking about. And so they have these uh, uh, coaches that they've been able to get from uh, Wisconsin, from uh, Milwaukee. And uh, the promise is that by June 2022, uh, these coaches will be out there to transport 500,000 passengers per day uh, from one end of the city to the other. And uh, the multimodal network to transport up to about, uh, you know, 20 million people you know, uh, across the state. We hope that will happen because transportation is a major challenge in Lagos. Even if the Commissioner for Information was quoted in one of the reports that, in fact, the traffic congestion situation in Lagos is not as bad as uh, what we have in some other parts of the world. Well, that may be true statistically, but at least it's a major area of concern for both government and the people in Lagos. Yes. Now, it was uh, referred to, the purchase of those trains was referred to by the governor of Wisconsin as a bittersweet experience. What, this is uh, a metro project. Yes, in 2009, the Democratic uh, governor of Wisconsin, you know, had placed uh, a bid for those trains from uh, a, a company called Targo. And the train was ready. But by the time the train was ready, uh, in 2012, the Democrat governor had left office. He was succeeded by a Republican. The Republican governor in the state uh, was not so interested in the project. So the uh, manufacturers of the train decided to terminate the contract. They went to uh, court and they get a compensation, got a compensation of about $50 uh, uh, million. Dollars. So, and that was why the governor in that state is saying, well, may work his loss. Uh, is uh, uh, Nigeria's uh, game. Mm. And what you see here is that, look, politics is a problem everywhere. Mm. You know, once one government leaves, another government uh, comes, things may happen. And ironically, there's a linkage with the experience with the metro system uh, in Lagos, mm. uh, you know, from the uh, civilian administration of Jaconde to the military administration uh, that mm. succeeded him at the time. But our interest is in the value, the utility, of these trains that have now been brought. And we hope that the uh, Sonwulu administration in Lagos will make sure that the trains are run properly and that the red line, as promised, gets going. And it's not just the red line. There's also the blue line. Mm. There's also waterway transportation. And there's also traffic management in Lagos. If that is all that uh, Sonwulu is able to achieve in his first term, I think that Nigerians will be most pleased indeed. Right. So, so I have a lot to say, Oji, but I, I'm just going to paraphrase because of time. I mean, kudos to Governor Sonwolu and Lagos State and part of, you know, the big multimodal uh, transport system because it's the megapolis we have in Lagos and, and this is what would make it be a mega city. And Lagos is the only mega city that doesn't have a metro that I know of in a, in a while, you know, mm. if it wants to compete among the top cities. But kudos to him. But two things I'd like to ask. Uh, number one will be, what's the cost? How much is it? Uh, the contract you mean it, cost... It, it, the yeah. contract or the Yeah, the contract cost. cost how, how much does a train cost to the Lagos taxpayer, like me, that I pay taxes in Lagos, and I work in Lagos, I work in Arise. So how much is it going to cost me? Yeah, the taxpayer, pretty much, because I saw that the cost came down to about $810 million there, but I'm not sure about that. But that's the cost that was supposed to exchange hands in Milwaukee. That's number one. Number two, a uh, great one, but I'll look forward to a future where... In having deals like this, how about bringing those companies to Nigeria? Because Talgo is a Spanish company, but it's based in Milwaukee. So those trains were produced out of Milwaukee. You know what that's going to do? That's going to create jobs for people in Milwaukee. They're going to pay taxes to the government in Milwaukee. So it's win-win at both ends. So I'm looking forward to a time in the future where Lagos is going to buy trains, probably from companies that are producing the trains in Nigeria, that have built capacity, that are employing Nigerians, that are employing Lagosians, and that are paying taxes to the coffers of government. And that's the way you can scale development in all. So these are the things that the Western nations do and how they can develop quickly. But really, I'd like to know the cost, you know, what it comes down to. But kudos, kudos, kudos. We're excited. I can't wait to get up on the train. Right. We shall take our final story. 
Isam Wike, the governor of River State on Wednesday, requested for police protection for local government chairpersons clamping down on illegal refining sites in the state. The governor had said during his New Year broadcast that his administration will not tolerate illegal oil refining activities considering its adverse effects on the environment and the people. In line with his commitment, Wike said the state government will support the local government chairpersons with what they need to dismantle illegal refining operations, including hiring of bulldozers to clear the sites and the sum of 2 million naira for every illegal site identified. This is coming on the heels of an investigation of a divisional police officer who is alleged to own an illegal refinery in the state. The governor had raised the alarm this week and demanded that the DPO who is in charge of a division in the community called Rumuji, be redeployed. Now, on the security side, it's unfortunate for this country how security people will be involved in illegal bunker. I, I, can't, be I can't believe it. Mr. CP, I thank you for transferring the DPO uh, Rumuji, who owns the refinery. But the man must live here. Not just Tafa, he must leave this state. He has to leave this state. I can't be governor here. And a security man owns a, a refinery, legal refinery. No, it's not possible. It is not possible. It is either he becomes the governor or I will be the governor. I will not agree. The man has to go. Take him to wherever they allow bunker. Tell IG, you should take him. He shouldn't be here again. Where is the civil defense man? Yes. Who is the man in charge of the uh, uh, foundation of a power plant? Who is the man in charge? Ted, yes. Who is the man in charge? Tell the man to transfer the man to the man leave. It's a saboteur. Complete saboteur. I will not allow it. I mean, how can security men be the world in for what? What kind of country are we in? What kind of country? If if you don't, if that man is not transferred, let us one day. <laughs> you know uh, where you are sitting? It's our property. I will not take it. And you will have found out civil defense escorting these people. Civil defense, you people are the ones, mainly, escorting them. Escorting them. Yes. <laughs> I love this man. Yeah. Now, I mean, I, kudos to him. He's been doing so well. I mean, just a feel feel good story. Thank you for another feel good yes. story, OJ. Yes. We had this um, report, really great report, filed by our colleague Ovietemir George. Yes, we discussed that this morning, showing the local government chairman of Equerry, local government, really, you know marching to the tune that the governor has dictated. Yes. It's a disgrace what's happening. It has to be says. said. And, we we yeah. did that video where those civil defense officers and police officers were fighting. Yes. I mean, and now we have this DPO who allegedly owns a, an oil refinery. How, how can that happen in Nigeria? It's such a betrayal. Really, big mm. betrayal. Well, what we're dealing with very quickly is a menace of oil theft. Yes. Mm. When you say illegal bunkering, that's a euphemism for oil theft, which is a major challenge. Or Nigeria. Mm. And uh, this day recently did a number of stories yes. on that. The second thing is, yes, Governor Wiki is uh, strong on this from 2017 to 2019, but would this be sustained? Yes. The third point, where are the uh, federal government agencies? Where is the Department of uh, uh, Petroleum Resources, DPR? Where is uh, NMPC itself? Where are the other relevant agencies, Nostra and all of that? You know, and then what kind of system is in place to ensure that some of the provisions in the Petroleum Industry Act are properly effectuated. Wow. Well, thank you all. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank, thank you. you. That's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you tomorrow.